Welcome to another installment of the CDA Institute's Expert Series. I'm your host, Josh Mall. Today's guest is Toshihiro Nakayama, Professor of American Politics and Foreign Policy at the Faculty of Policy Management at Keio University and Adjunct Fellow at the Japan Institute of International Affairs. We spoke about enhancing Canada's relationship with Japan, particularly in the Indo-Pacific, the impact of American political polarization on multilateralism, as well as Japan's strategy for managing China. Here's an excerpt of our conversation. Is the partisanship and political polarization in US politics potentially destabilizing for multilateral alliances and partnerships necessary to tackle global challenges, such as the ones China poses? You know, US-Japan alliance or US-Japan relation doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? I think US has to be seen as a credible player uh, uh, from other you know, countries in the region at the sort of the international organizations, including the UN and how the, sort of the transatlantic relations uh, is formed. So, you know, US-Japan uh, alliance can effectively function uh, when US is seen as a credible, you know, sort of internationalist player, right? And what we're seeing, and we, we see that uh, in, in the uh, Biden era as well, but the American body politic, especially if you com compare to uh, the high days of the Cold War, where there was a strong consensus, I guess this was before the Vietnam War, right? that there was a strong consensus that US has to sort of counter the Soviet aggression and, and uphold uh, uh, you know, the liberal order. I think there was a, a, a society-wide uh, consensus. Not that, you know, ordinary people were, were, were well-versed in, you know, foreign policy and national security, but there was a general understanding that this is the role that U U.S. has to accept in sort of countering sort of international communist movement, right? Uh, but we don't see that these days. And it's totally understandable. Right? Uh, U.S. has been, although they're withdrawing from uh, Afghanistan, they've been involved in Af Afghanistan for close to 20 years, right? Without really understand the results of it. Uh, uh, the war in Iraq uh, is not seen as uh, a success. Many people uh, have doubts about uh, the decision uh, you know, you know, that the Bush uh, team uh, took in, in, in 2003. You know, uh, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, for the first time as a Republican, uh, you know, a, a political figure, was extremely critical of America's intervention in Iraq, right? So I don't think America, American people has suddenly become, you know, sort of like an anti-war activist, but they are surely tired of uh, you know, uh, sort of international engagement. And you see many countries rising and the sense is that why does US have to accept all these respons responsibilities? Can't we just let go some responsibilities? I think that is uh, the dominant trend in the American body politic. And in that sense, Mr. Trump's message of America first resonate with that. It made sense. And Mr. Biden or whomever uh, sort of becomes a president after that Trump, Trump you know, uh, era has to somehow deal with that unless all the other countries sort of suddenly like, you know, falls and U.S., you know, rises again. That's not going to happen. Right? So uh, this American credibility is fragile, shaky. And I think the Biden team understands that. So that's where the term, this notorious term, right, this middle class foreign policy comes from. Some people describe and try to understand uh, Biden's middle class foreign policy as trying to make jobs, use foreign policy as a tool to make job in the United States. But I don't think it's that. I think you have to sort of reverse that. 
And uh, uh, I think the Biden team's thinking is that in order to convince the American people that America has to, to, to still engage in international affairs and play a proactive role, uh, this, this internationalism has to make sense to the ordinary, ordinary uh, uh, you know, American people. So it's not that they're trying to create jobs using foreign policy, rather, it's to, it's to uh, somehow try to convince the American people that American uh, internationalism is vital. <laughs>